Good morning. Welcome to Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church. This morning we gather for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Jesus says, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is God's promise from the beginning to Abraham, to the early church, and to the little flock of which we are part in today's assembly. Faith, God's baptismal gift, trusts the promise of God. Today we further celebrate the baptismal gift with Henry's baptism. Thank you for joining us this morning and for our worship this morning and celebration. And we continue with our gathering song. congregation be seated at this time. We have a baptism, Henry Jasper Brisky. Yeah. 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 You. Uh, there are some special things we want to note today. The, the cross and the stole that I'm wearing belonged to Pastor Shelley Willem, uh, who, uh, my colleague who died back in March. And she had been pastor for uh, Allie and Paul before this one was born. And Paul is wearing Allie's dad's um, baptismal pin that he would wear uh, for baptism. So you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into the living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Christ Jesus. We are united with all the baptized in one body, the body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, Paul and Allie, do you desire to have your child Henry baptized into Christ. We do. we do. As you bring Henry to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him uh, to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, Place in his hands the holy scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that Henry may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Henry grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors. Anne and Jamie, 
do you promise to nurture Henry in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? We do. And people of God, do you promise to support Henry and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. We do. Now I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw us from God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce, I renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you de delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus, death, and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, now, now is the time. Henry Jasper Brisky, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Nice. Here, Dad. <laughs> now you belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons a new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Henry with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Henry Jasper Brett Brisky, you are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This candle was lighted when water was being poured on your head, and God said, you belong to me. So we say, let your light so shine before others that they would see your good works, Henry, and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome Henry, the newly baptized. We welcome, we welcome you into the body of Christ 
and into the mission we share, joining us in giving thanks and praise to God and hearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Our new brother. You can bring that up. We will now sing Borning Cry. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a place When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your heart to make your verses rhyme from dust to rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us uh, prepare for the, the reading of the word. The first reading comes from the book of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be great, be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, I'm you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you're able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second lesson comes from the book of Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, 
By faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he was considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises. Yet from, from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Word of God, word of life. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson is from the 12th chapter of the gospel called Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, do not be afraid, little flock, for your, it is your God, Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what time or what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I'll invite the young people forward at this time. We have a few. Yeah, you want to bring Henry up? No? Come on, Henry. Make a new friend with Daniel. That's okay. Well, because it's summer, right? Okay. So, um, do you know uh, 
do you know direction like north, south, east, west? Yes. Uh, are you good at when somebody says uh, go left or go right, you do it right the first time? Usually. Usually. <laughs> yeah, that's about my answer too. <laughs> Well, so, um, so your parents give you directions, right? Yeah. And your teachers give you directions. Are there other people that, in your life that give you directions? Um, I don't. I okay, don't that's all right. Um, sometimes you have to figure it out for yourself, right? Whether it's how you're gonna get to 7-Eleven and get a Slurpee. Right? Or, or uh, maybe if you're going to a friend's house, you know the name of the street, and maybe you're on your bike or something and you know how to get there, or mom drops you off or something. Um, well, when you start adulting, it's, there's not a lot of people telling you what to do. Well, there are, but it's for different reasons. <laughs> and you have to figure out your pathway in life. The reading today uh, from Hebrews comes a couple chapters ahead of another verse that I mentioned at, uh, during Henry's baptism, uh, that he's surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We all are. And uh, they don't tell us what to do. Some of them are alive. Some of them are with God. Uh, some have, through their life, shown us how to live. And, uh, and given us some ideas for the direction our life might take. You're still young, so it's okay to figure it out and make mistakes along the way because you are surrounded by a lot of people, we call it the church or the body of Christ, who are cheering for you, okay? So even if you stumble, it's okay because you belong to God, and you belong to all of us. And when you ask God for some guidance, uh, it's not going to be, well, Daniel, I want you to go, and I want you to be um, an astronaut, and then when you come back to earth, I want you to become a pastor. That's not how God's going to lay things out. God's going to call you through the things that are interesting to you, and that will take you all over the place. But you will never be alone because you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And Abraham, you've heard of Abraham, right? Yes. Yeah, and Sarah. They trusted God even though they didn't know where they were going. They trusted God even though the promise God, the promise God made was when Abraham was 75, which means that Sarah was 65, that they were going to have their own child. And that child and many descendants would come from that child. But 25 years later, when Abraham was 100, 100 and Sarah was 90, they finally had that baby. Now, some of us might think that's kind of a cruel joke God played on them, but God was able to do something special there. And so, God, so Abraham and Sarah, they messed up along the way too. But they kept going because they knew and trusted God's promises. So for you, for Henry, for all the young people, and for all of us, we want to trust God's promises for whatever direction we're going in. Even as Grace is looking at this horizon in front of us, we are uh, wanting to, to, um, to, to listen for God's voice. Okay? Let's pray. Dear God, we are grateful that you do speak to us, that you reach out to us and you call us, invite us into, into uh, journeys and experiences that, that you will be able to use, that we will be able to use to give you glory and to share the good news. 
continue to strengthen each one of us in our baptismal promise that, uh, that you have made to us. And, uh, and, and even in those times when we doubt and we're uncertain, we know that you are with us. So grant us your peace and your grace as we find our way through this life. We pray this with Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some pirate doubloons were discovered in the upstairs room. Then a map, a treasure map, for sure, because there was on it a big X, right? Everyone knows X marks the spot, right? Yeah. And so the race was on. Three boys, a treasure map, and the beach. There was a lot of loud talking, excited, excitement, and then things calmed down to a frenzy. <laughs> Where to start? What's the starting point? You need a place that corresponds to the map to get started. And so with their dad and their grandpa's help, they began to wind their way around the house, comparing the map to their surroundings. Of course, many years had passed since the making of that map. Things had changed a bit. Ah, yes, but landmarks on the map slowly began to get noticed. It was the manhole cover that proved a challenge, but those three boys ran around, recounted paces, doubled back, and finally found the clue and the trail once again. And it led to the beach. Yes, and after running around the beach like wild men, those boys discovered, surprisingly, that there was no big X marks the spot. And so they went back to Captain Greybeard's land, uh, map and looked and looked. And suddenly they spotted something strange that kind of sort of looked like an X. And man, did the sand fly out of that hole. <laughs> and there it was. Buried treasure chest. Yeah. And back to the beach house, covering it up, looking over shoulders to make sure that there weren't any threats to that chest. They spilled out the treasure. Chocolate doubloons. Pirate flag, pearls and gems of all kinds, coins, bones and shells and a little bit of sand. It was real pirate booty for sure. Yeah. The eldest boy asked Grandma, did Grandpa do this? And she put her arm around his eight-year-old shoulders and said, did you have fun? Your brothers are having fun. Let's not spoil it for them, okay? The scriptures for today remind me of a treasure map. God's treasure map. A treasure map that's not a wild goose chase meant to hide treasure to be found only by those clever enough to discover and figure out the signs. But God's treasure map is for a lifelong journey that leads us to the one who has made promises, one who is trustworthy. Abraham heard God's voice, had visions of being led on a lifelong journey. Promises were made. Promises that Abraham and Sarah 
did not live to see come to fulfillment. Yet, as the Hebrews writer tells us, they believed. They had faith. Even when it seemed like God was late, 25 years late, or maybe even longer than that, but 25 years. And Abraham had no map pointing the way, only God's promise of place and family of descendants. Where we are in the Abraham story in chapter 10 or 15 of Genesis is, is 13 years more would pass before the son of the promise would be born. The next chapter, chapter 16, is where Ishmael is born to the slave Hagar. But it is Isaac, who is the son of promise, born when Sarah and Abraham were really old, as good as dead. But God reckoned, God accounted Abraham's trust as righteous. Well, that sentence in, in Genesis and in Hebrews can be read a couple of other ways. One is that Abraham believed that God is righteous and faithful. One, the one whose word can be trusted. Abraham understood that God would make good on the promises that God had made. And so Abraham believed. In the text from Hebrews, we are given a treasure map. And the landmarks are people of faith. Did you notice how many times the word faith came up in that reading? The writer is giving landmarks on the treasure map. Faith believes the righteous one and, and believes that the righteous one can bring new life from the dead, can fulfill God's promise that may seem invisible. The Hebrews readers had experienced hardships, public ridicule, loss of property, imprisonment, suffering, loss of members in the faith. And in this letter, they are be being handed a map of landmarks to the treasure. They, though it seemed that the Lord the Lord's coming again had been delayed and they were losing heart, the map they get points to faith. Points to faith in people. People who make mistakes. People who, who, who try things and take risks and then start over. It's it's the path to the treasure of God in Christ Jesus. It is by faith, in faith, and of faith. By faith, endurance is the way of life for believers. We, won't, we don't find the path, we don't find the directions right away, and sometimes it takes some pretty crazy turns, but faith in the trustworthy and righteous God, the map that we read is the path in the real world that God created, a world made visible by faith in the God who is the source of life and mercy and love. We don't have to be afraid of the future. Um, frankly, right now, it still looks a bit scary. Sometimes it seems like the Lord's delays are trying, <laughs> or we have to take a detour, but the landmarks are there. 
the faithfulness of God reaching out to all creatures, the faithfulness of God's people through thick and thin. They are our landmarks. Who are some of those landmarks on your treasure map? My colleague, Shelley. She was a dynamo. <laughs> she was a wonderful, bright, and very astute interim pastor. And she was one of my go-tos. She just, there was something about her. And she was fearless. I think of my maternal grandmother's maternal grandmother, Anne, her name, in Denmark old, living with one of her daughters on, on the family farm. My grandmother and her siblings hearing her pray because she couldn't read the scriptures. She would recite scripture for memory, and then she would pray, and I betcha she knew they were there, but she was a landmark for, for them and for me because she would pray for her children and her grandchildren and all the generations to come that they would believe on the Lord Jesus. And I am a product of that prayer. And then there are other people in my lives, in my life that have, have shown me the way that sometimes didn't make sense to me, but it made sense to them and they gave me inspiration. Those whose faith has pointed to Jesus are the landmarks on our journey as we travel to the treasure that has been stored up for us, not just in heaven, but in the body of Christ, in the church. And it's on this journey of faith that we become. We are becoming becoming all that we are in relationship with God and with each other, in the waiting, in the hope, in the challenges and disappointments, everything we experience, everyone we befriend, they are part of what, how God shapes us for the kingdom not there, but here, the kingdom here. So when we continue to keep Christ at the forefront of all that we do, all that we are, and we trust God's promises will be fulfilled in Christ Jesus and have been fulfilled in Christ Jesus, we just haven't fully experienced it all yet, and that's okay. Then even when this this treasure map seems buried and lost. We still can find that treasure map, see the landmarks of faith, and be guided. Because our treasure can't be stolen, but it can be shared, which increases the treasure. And that's the way of the kingdom, God's kingdom on earth. That's the real treasure map. X really does mark the spot. Amen.
I invite you to be seated for our time of prayer. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Especially we pray for Ted, Linda and Tim, Tom, Skyler, Cleo, Colby, Madeline, Lydia and Sean, for Jaya, for Bernie and Dorian, Hallie, Christy, Josephine, Michael and Pam, for John, Joseph, Doris, Marilyn, Pastor Jane, for families in crisis, for teens struggling with depression and their parents, and for our Bible camps, staff, and, and campers. We also pray for those who are grieving for Lou, Milt, Pastor Dave, and Ruth. We continue to lift up those in Kentucky dealing with floods and storm for places that have experienced gun violence, we pray for Cain and Abel, for the fears and anxieties of the continuing pandemic. We pray for those who continue to suffer, for the houseless and the hungry, for places affected by a storm and flood, fire, drought, earthquake, and eruptions. We, we pray for those who enter into those places to bring relief, grant them strength, and let their presence be a measure of your hope and mercy. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministry of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Let us briefly share the peace of Christ with one another from the places where we are in whatever manner you would like to express peace to others.
All right, this is uh, the part, the time in our worship where we gather our, our weekly tithes and offerings. There are baskets in the pews that you can use, and on the screen you will see other ways to, uh, to give to the ministry uh, that goes on in and through grace. If you noticed in uh, the, uh, uh, the readings today where your treasure is, there will your heart be. There, were, there was also um, the shit Jesus talks about uh, selling your goods. It's not about for the benefit of the poor, it's for the benefit of the rich to let go of trusting in their own wealth, just like from last Sunday. So uh, this is the time for our, our offering and our offering meditation. Those of you who are having communion in the pews, this is the time for, to prepare that, and uh, our communion assistants will meet in the sacristy.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless us with gifts of, a, of guidance, new life, growth in grace, and fruitful labor. Accept the first fruits of time and toil, field and orchard we offer here. Bless and multiply these gifts to our nurture and the care of your creation. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
All right, now is the time for announcements. And I have a couple, and I think uh, Kristen has one. So while she's coming up, I'll do a couple. Uh, there are a few um, lavender uh, half sheets. These are for uh, Lutheran disaster response, for giving to, um, to the U.S. flooding. Are you gonna come up and help? All right, it's okay. Your daddy, it's okay. And uh, so if you are interested in giving towards um, uh, the, the flooding that's going on in Kentucky and some of the other uh, neighboring uh, uh, places that uh, will be helpful. And then um, in the newsletter, if you read it, anyway, um, there, there's a, a two-page um, funeral, memorial, celebration of life planning sheet. Uh, I, we are in the process of taking the ones that we have and putting them uh, into our server so that we have access to them. Uh, I had to go searching. So um, if you have not planned your service, now is the time. Don't leave it for your family. I can tell you by my own experience, that, that was hard, okay? So um, you can do all kinds of things uh, and um, even leave a last message. I had one gentleman do that and it was powerful uh, to hear his, his last words to his family and friends. So those are uh, out in the glass entry. There's maybe um, about 10 of them there. So if we need more, just let me know. Uh, and then uh, please keep in mind two dates. The last Sunday of the month, because after worship on the 28th, we are going to go to, um, or 26th, anyway, whatever the last Sunday is. Then we're going to have a, a picnic just for us. And then the following Sunday is Labor Day Sunday, Labor Day weekend Sunday, and we're going to be having the, the, the annual ecumenical um, worship time together, and we are uh, providing snacks. So um, keep those two dates in mind, and uh, I call on Kristen. I have more dates to keep in mind. The first one's super easy. It's today. We are having our first Sunday of the month potluck just right outside, right after worship. We'll have sandwiches um, and just some fellowship time together, so we invite you all to join us for that. Next week, after worship, we are going to meet at Willamette Park, um, let's say starting around 12.30, um, for our float trip. So we will be putting in at Willamette Park and taking out at, I think it's called Michael's Landing, is that right? Thank you. Um, all are welcome to join for that. Let's meet at 12.30 at Willamette Park to make sure everybody has what they need so that we can be on the river at 1 o'clock. It should still be pretty toasty uh, next Sunday, so it'll feel good to be on the river. And then the last date to keep in mind is also August 28th. Um, we will be commissioning our college students at that time and sending them out um, as they head out to college, even though a few of them don't actually start until like mid-September. But that's fine, we'll do it for all of them August 28th. If you are interested in being a sponsor of one of our college students and learning a little bit more about what that's about, come find me at the potluck. I would love to talk to you about what it means to help continue to support our college students, even when they're not here physically with us, um, when they're out around the country and around the globe um, studying and learning more. So come find me, talk to me about that. I would love to get you all connected. Jen. That's uh, another way we can be the great cloud of witnesses that surround uh, our young people, our young adults, our college students, and each other. Um, any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay. Uh, Benton County is now down to yellow. So that means we could start having refreshments after after worship, so uh, be looking for uh, for the, um, the that opportunity and bring something to share, and we'll we'll get it organized. Okay, all right. Now receive the benediction. 
the Holy Three, the Holy One. Increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Sending song. Go in peace. Christ is with you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.